So this is what we're starting off with. We've got a car sales website. It's really basic, really simple. It's using WooCommerce. And if we scroll down underneath, you can see there's our products, in this case, the vehicles. Now, we've got some basic information that's straight out of the box, what you'd have as part of WooCommerce. So the featured image, we've got the name of the product, the price. And if we want to, we can go and look at the details. There's a couple of inherent problems with this. We could, if we wanted to, use the description fields to add in some extra information, but that's not really the best way of going about it. Now, we are going to be using ACF, totally free version. We're going to be using Elemental Pro because we want to tap into the dynamic features and also the ability to customize templates and so on. And we are going to be using the loop builder that's part of the experiments in Elemental at this point in time. If we come into the template section and into our theme builder, what I've done is I've created an archive template that's going to be used for our products, in this case, our vehicles. Now, you would obviously create more templates for the individual listing items and all different things. I just want to show you the basics, and then you can repeat it on any template that you want. So, for example, if you open this up and take a quick look inside here, you can see what we have is basically the loop builder. So if we click on this first one, we can edit the template and edit the layout, the content, and so on. So what we need to do now is go ahead and start adding in the ACF fields that we want to use. Now, I'm going to use just a couple of examples, but the process is pretty much exactly the same across the board for whatever you want to add in. So what we're going to do is we're going to come down to ACF, or Advanced Custom Fields, two things we're going to do inside here. We're going to create a custom taxonomy to allow us to group things based upon the manufacturer and also add in some additional field groups to the products themselves. So let's start off with the taxonomies because this is probably the simplest. So let's head into taxonomies. And inside here, we're going to give this a new taxonomy. We're going to click on Add New. We're going to give this a name, Manufacturer. We'll pop in the singular label underneath and it'll automatically create the taxonomy key. Post types, what are we going to associate this with? Well, we want this to be associated with products, so we'll select that from the list. That's it. If you want to come into the advanced configuration, you can do, but we're going to keep this really simple now. If you are new to working with advanced custom fields, I do have a primer video that will get you up to speed, which I'll link in the description and in one of the corners right now. So take a look at that if you come into ACF without knowing pretty much anything about it. That's a good starting point. Now, if you want to, you can leave it as it is, but if you want to come in and tweak things, you can do that inside the advanced setting. So, for example, we might want to allow it to have sorting options. We may want to change the labels. In our example, I'm happy with everything. Visibility, obviously, you want this to show up. We want to add this to the admin column so we can see what manufacturer inside the admin column itself. And that's basically all we're going to do here. Click on Save Changes. And now if we hop over and take a look at our products, you'll see now we have a new option inside here for manufacturers right at the end. Now, obviously, nothing is inside there because we haven't added any in just yet. So to address that, all we need to do is hop over into the option for manufacturers underneath products, click inside there, and now we can start adding them in. So for example, let's start off with Mercedes, and we'll click to add that in. Now, if you could add a description in if you want to, but we'll leave it as it is for now. We can add a couple more in. And there we go. We've added all the different manufacturers I want in this example, but you could, again, add as many as you need to. And then if we go into our products, open up this Mercedes SL, for example, we now have a new entry inside here for our manufacturers. You can see this now allows us to just go ahead and select what we want. So we just start typing in Mercedes. That will filter that out. We can click on Add. And now we can just save this. And we've now set this to be a Mercedes so we can filter things based upon their actual uh, brands as well, their manufacturers. So all you need to do is simply come in now to all of your products and repeat this process for all of the different manufacturers. Again, I'm going to quickly do that so you don't have to watch me. And there we go. We now have all of the manufacturers linked up to the relevant products or the relevant vehicles. So the next thing we need to do is go ahead and create our custom meta fields and then start to associate those with products. And then we can see exactly how to, first of all, input the information and then how to display it using Elemental Pro. So let's hop back over into ACF. And this time we're going to choose the field groups option. We'll give it a name by clicking Add New and then give it a name and we'll say, and now underneath we can go and add in the different fields that we want to use. Now, like I say, I'm going to keep this relatively simple, just add a couple of fields in, but you can add as many as you want. And the whole process of displaying this is exactly the same. It's just repeating the same process. So first of all, let's go ahead and drop in something like a number and we're going to call this engine size. We can, if you want to, just leave it as it is. We can hop into validation and say we want to make this required, how we want to present this information, any placeholder text, step sizes, and so on. So what we're going to do is we're going to put the append, and we're going to put CC in there for the CCs, the size of the engine. There we go. There's our first field. 
can close that down, add another field in. Next up, let's choose a different option. We're going to do this for the fuel type. So we're going to scroll through until we find the select option. And we're going to put in fuel. Again, field name will auto fill out. Then we can drop in our choices. So we're just going to say, there we go. We're simply going to leave this set to be label as well. You can't select multiple values. And we're going to go ahead, validation. Again, we can apply options inside here and the presentation. So we're going to say we want this to be something like, 33 percent we'll add another field in next up let's just drop in the number of seats so we're going to select the option for number again now you could if you wanted to use a simple option to allow people to select but it's probably quicker and easier to allow them to type in so we'll just say number of seats in the presentation and we're going to set this to be 33 percent as well and let's just add one more in just for ease just so we've got a couple of different options to demonstrate let's just set this again to be an option for a select field and this time we're going to set this to be the transmission. Drop the values in and we'll say we want to return the label. No, we don't want to allow selected multiple values and we'll set that to be 33% as well. So we'll say now that we've created all of the fields that we want. Like I say, you could get as creative as you want with pretty much any kind of field type. Next thing we need to do is associate this now with our products. So at the moment it says post type is equal to post. Let's change that over to product and let's go ahead and save our changes. Once you've done that, again, come back into our products and all products. And let's open our Mercedes up one more time and let's scroll down. And now you can see we've got our extra vehicle details inserted in here. So what we need to do is put in what we want. So we'll say 2.5. So we'll put the size of the engine in. We'll say the fuel type. Number of seats is going to be four in this example. And we'll say this is an automatic. So we've created our new meta fields associated with them and we've gone ahead and add that information in. So there we go, we've now added more info. So let's go ahead and do the same thing now on the rest of our vehicles and then we're gonna take a look at how to output all of this inside Elemental Pro. Okay, there's all our vehicles now all set up with our new custom meta information and our new taxonomy. All we need to do now is head over into any of the templates or any of the pages you want to insert this information. So let's head over now into the option in templates and let's open up our theme builder one more time. Let's open up our archive page. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna edit this loop item. And once we edit the loop item and put in the placeholders for the dynamic text, all of the rest of these fields will automatically update with the relevant information we've added to each one of these vehicles. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on edit template. That will open up the template editing options and we're now editing the loop template. All we're gonna do is we're gonna come down and we're gonna just go ahead and start adding in extra information. So for this example, let's start off with a heading. We'll drop that underneath our vehicle name. We're gonna set this to be a div. We'll set our size and everything else we want on here as well. So we'll set this to be white. For typography, we're gonna just set this something like that. That'll do, doesn't really matter too much. We'll set it to be 15 pixels, so it's a little bit smaller. Okay, so the most important thing is how do we actually go ahead and grab that dynamic data? Well, this is really easy. This is using the title field. You can see we've got out our text here. However, if we have this little dynamic tags option, we can select that and we now have access to an awful lot of extra information that we can pull in from not only native WordPress and WooCommerce, but also from our custom meta fields that we've just created. So if you scroll right the way down, past all the WooCommerce options, you'll see we have ACF and ACF fields. Let's click on the ACF fields and you'll see nothing happens and we now lose our information inside that particular area. What we need to do is click on this little wrench icon and that will open up the option to choose the key that we want to reference. In this example, we've got the engine size, fuel type, and so on. Those new custom meta fields we've just created. So let's start off with the engine size. We'll select it and we're gonna come down to advanced and you'll see that now pops in the actual size of it. So we're gonna just put in engine size, a colon, and afterwards we'll put CC in there. So we'll have the relevant information now for the size of the engine. So we can do the same thing again. So we can easily make our lives quicker and easier. We'll just select this and we'll just say we want to duplicate it. We can come back in, choose the little wrench icon, change this from engine size to fuel type, come into advanced, and again, we're gonna change this. We'll remove the after. We now have our fuel type. And we can keep on repeating this now until we get all of the information in using exactly the same principle that I've just demonstrated.
And there we go, we've now added in more information about this particular vehicle. And because it's the template, it'll reflect everywhere we've just set it up. So if we now go and click on update, we can click save and back, give it a second to reload, and now all our vehicles have this extra information being added into them. So it's really pretty simple and straightforward. And you can use this technique anywhere throughout your entire Elementor setup, templates, pages, all those kinds of things. Anywhere you see that little wrench icon, you can access dynamic data. It really is pretty simple and straightforward. Okay, so we've seen how to add in standard basic ACF fields, but what about that custom taxonomy that we set up that allowed us to grab information and specify what manufacturer is associated with any of these vehicles? How do we output that? That's got to be a little different, right? It is, but it's using basically the same kind of principle. So let's go ahead back into our template and edit it one more time. Let's just simply come down where we want to insert this. For ease, let's just simply duplicate this final entry. And like we've done before, let's select it, come over, but this time we're gonna delete whatever's inside there. We're gonna to click to get rid of it, then click the database icon. So now let's scroll through until we find the options for WooCommerce. Because we've associated this, this category, this taxonomy with WooCommerce itself, we reference it by simply going ahead and using the product terms. So if we select that, you can see again, we get the little wrench icon, we can click, you can see taxonomy is selected this time. Product category is set by default. We're gonna change that and we're gonna say this is gonna be manufacturer. And then we're gonna just come down to advanced and change categories to manufacturer. And there we go. We now have Mercedes inside there. So we can do the same again. We can save this and go back. And now you can see we've got all the details about the seats, transmission, and also the manufacturer. So again, we're using ACF data that's being created, set up as a taxonomy, associated with our products. And then we can pull that in as a product category. Pretty simple and straightforward. And this is, like I say, just scratching the surface of what you can do once you want to get started using dynamic data. So let's go ahead and make sure this is updated pop over to our page. This is where we started off. Let's go ahead and refresh this. And now what we end up with, if we scroll down, is all of the details that we've just set up for all that information that we wanted to put in. So now anybody looking at our vehicles can get more information and make a much better, more informed decision. And if we want to click on the view details, that will take us over then into the product or in this example, the vehicles. And you can repeat this process with all of the fields you may want to create, probably a lot more than you'd have on this kind of listing archive page. But hopefully this has demonstrated that it's not particularly scary to get started. You can organize your information in a much more logical fashion and you can expand what you do with using WooCommerce without having to rely upon a bunch of third party tools. You can add whatever additional data you want to add in simply by using advanced custom fields and some of the built-in features you have with no extra cost associated with it. As always, if you have any questions, comments, or feedback, drop those in the comment section down below. As always, all of the applicable links are in the description. My name is Paul C, and this is WP Tuts, and until next time, take care.